Good afternoon, I'm Giovanni Dennis with the Midday News. A special welcome if you're joining us online at onespotmedia.com. Couldn't be more stark. The health ministry has given further details on the gravity of overcrowding in hospitals and the grim outlook if COVID-19 cases continue to increase at current rates. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Bisesa mckenzie gave the update during the Ministry of Health's weekly COVID conversations a short while ago. If we do not bring down this reproductive rate, the demand we are already past maxed, but the demand will continue to increase. The country's chief medical officer sharing the daunting updates on the COVID-19 crisis gripping Jamaica. First up, bed space has exceeded capacity. As of February, the number of cases that are hospitalized have gone above the beds that we have committed to COVID. And even with the introduction of the Falmouth um, additional ward and the additional ward at St. Joseph's and a few more spaces, we are still at just about 600 beds that are dedicated to COVID and our numbers are above that in terms of the hospitalizations. What this means is that persons with COVID are utilizing other beds that we would have used for our general admissions. Next up, the numbers are still increasing. This week saw the highest positivity rate of about 40%. That means four in every 10 Jamaicans tested have COVID-19. If we continue at the rate of having a reproductive rate of between 1.2 1.1, what it is that we will see is a continued increase in the number of cases. If it is that we continue to increase the number of cases, the overall number of active cases in country increases. Mask wearing still a major concern. Many persons are wearing masks, but they're wearing it on their chins and their heads. When we are out on the road, we see persons in the taxis that they don't have on their mask. We need to ensure that persons are wearing masks. Our observational studies are showing that 0 to 50 percent, 51 percent of persons are wearing masks at any particular time in different parts of the island. Now, this needs to improve. The health minister's description of the current situation. The information provided by the, our chief medical officer cannot be more stark. I think it's so important that we recognize that to a large extent, we are, in fact, our own undoing. Uh, we are, in fact, the cause substantially of the challenges that we're facing. Two updates on the vaccination program now. Just over 4,000 Jamaicans over the age of 75 or priority healthcare workers have registered for vaccinations on the government's online portal since it went live on Monday. 31,000 vaccination slots are available. As at 5 a.m. this morning, 41, 4,108 persons have made appointments on the system. So we understand and appreciate that, that we, we, have, we have still a, a sizable number of persons that are, that are required to come online. We are encouraging persons, Minister, to use the online portal. Um, as the most efficient way. Mr. Bryan says there are challenges for people over 75 to navigate the internet and is calling on younger family members to help them register. I understand and appreciate that there are some persons in the population, especially in this age group, that would find this particular method challenging. So what we are asking persons who can use online um, resources to register, to use that portal rather than making calls and reserve the call center for those persons who do not have the abil ability to, to engage in an online registration process. On vaccinations, just under 27,000 Jamaicans have been inoculated since the start of the vaccination program on March 10. The update was provided by the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Health, Dunstan Bryan. For week one, we achieved 94% of our target for that week. And for week two, we are already 91%.
Um, today represents the last day of week two. Um, we begin, we began our process on March 10, and so our weeks start from the Wednesday and end the Tuesday of the following week. So week one, we are 94%, week two, 91%. Um, our target for the month uh, is 56, uh, we have achieved 56% of that target and for the year, we are 1%. So overall, Minister, 26,512 persons have been vaccinated in the population as at yesterday. Jamaica recorded a reduction in the number of new COVID-19 cases on Monday compared to previous days. Yesterday, the country recorded 335 new cases. This pushes the number of confirmed COVID-19 cases to 36,231. Kingston and St. Andrew continue to record the most new cases with, with 79, followed by St. Catherine with 54. Meanwhile, six more people have died from the virus. The total number of COVID-19 deaths now stand at 542. The latest persons to succumb from the illness or to the illness are an 83-year-old female from Westmoreland, a 64-year-old male from St. Catherine, a 68-year-old male from St. Elizabeth, a 68-year-old male from St. James, a 77-year-old female from St. Anne, and a 92-year-old female also from St. Anne. Meanwhile, the number of people in hospitals with the disease climbed to yet a new record, 433. 40 are critically ill. There are 18,947 currently active cases. There's a call for the government to use the period of lockdown to test more people for COVID-19. Civil Society representative to the Access to COVID Tools Accelerator, Dr. Carolyn Gomes, says the current level of testing is inadequate. Shamila Pullen reports. So far, over 264,000 Jamaicans have tested positive for COVID-19 and over 35,000 tested positive with the virus. But civil society representative to the Access to COVID Tools Accelerator, Dr. Carolyn Gomes, says more testing is needed. We need to be testing everybody with rapid tests, every suspected contact, every a symptomatic person who has been in, in contact with somebody. We need to be testing people on their way into workplaces twice a week, possibly, potentially. And we can do that. And then we need to be following up. Right now, they're overwhelmed. We have a positivity rate today of 46%, which means we're not doing enough testing to control the virus, just as a basic starting point. Dr. Gomes thinks the government should use the period of lockdown to test more people. She's also suggesting that the government engage contact tracers outside of the Ministry of Health. According to Dr. Gomes, there are a number of people who are doing work on violence prevention or HIV detection and would know about contact tracing and could assist. Because I think at this point in time when your positivity rate is 40 something percent, which means basically that every other person you meet has the COVID and can transmit it to you, then what is the point we need to interrupt that level of, of transmission? And I don't see how we, we interrupt it entirely based on testing. But while we pause, while we lock down, even if it is limited lockdowns of communities, we must use that time to ramp up the testing, to get in the test, to get people trained in them. To in addition, Dr. Gomes says the government should implement social support programs to assist people who need help during the lockdown. Dr. Gomes says this type of help can be sought internationally. Can we afford to have people dying because their asthma can't get treated? Can we afford to have people dying in community because there are no beds? Can we afford to have a death rate climbing and climbing and climbing and an infection rate spiraling out of control? Because that is the alternative. We have got to do something sensible to interrupt this transmission. No. And it's not to say that there's not help available. There is help available. International help available. Bank help available. I have been working with the Access to COVID Tools Accelerator since last year, April. The list of resources and the package of support available is immense. Shamela Pullen, TVJ News.
More reactions this afternoon following stricter COVID-19 measures announced by Prime Minister Andrew Holness on Sunday. The new measures are set to hit small business operators the hardest, Cody and Barrett reports. The hope of returning to normalcy for the business community was shattered when Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced new COVID measures at a press conference Sunday evening. Business owners are now required to pull their shutters earlier on the weekends and observe a total lockdown on Sundays for the next three weeks. It's a move ruffling many feathers across the island. Even if you open at 7 a.m., that only gives shoppers three hours to do their weekend shopping. And you can imagine the chaos that is going to um, confront the shoppers, the supermarket operators, and the public transport, yeah. transport system. CEO of Jamaica Tees, John Mafood, believes poor management of the COVID-19 pandemic has led to the rapid increase in COVID-19 cases. He's also of the view that the stricter measures imposed by the Prime Minister are not enough to deal with the spread. So all the government is now doing for three weekends is imposing strict measures um, to try and slow down the, the spread. But what happens after that? Um, we're right back to square one. And if they're not doing enough, which I think is the basic problem, if they're not doing enough to curtail the spread of the virus, then all we're doing is wasting our time and, and effort. While the lockdown could threaten small businesses, president of the micro, small and medium-sized enterprises, MSME Alliance, Donovan Wignall, believes there's also an opportunity for them to cash in. The Panchet and Man can now sign up on a platform. And anybody who wants, for example, Panchet or any kind of street food, once they are signed up, they can go on the platform, make the order. The order goes to the Panchet and Man, and a delivery guy comes up take that food, he gets his payment electronically because he's on the platform. And that food is now delivered to whomever, wherever, within a specific geographical, his geographical area. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. And it's now time for a break here on the Midday News, but please stay with us. We'll have much more when you return. Welcome back. We're continuing the news. Despite the Prime Minister rejecting the call to reduce debt payments by $21 billion and redirect the money to various projects, the opposition continues to push for the proposal to be adopted. Ahead of the Finance Minister's presentation this afternoon to close the budget debate, opposition spokesman Julian Robinson is doubling down on the recommendations with the hope of hearing changes later. Cody and Barrett reports. Speaking on TVJ's Smile Jamaica this morning, opposition spokesman on finance Julian Robinson explained that the country's debt to gross domestic product GDP ratio has increased and reversing it must include expanding the economy. We believe that to reverse this decline, what the government has to do is to inject money into the economy. It has to put money in the hands of persons so that you can increase demand and we have targeted specific areas. We have looked at the most vulnerable. We have looked at those small and micro businesses that we call the economic first responders. His suggestion is that the government defer some debt obligation to get the additional funding. You could look at the obligations, for example, your loan repayments that might be due in the upcoming financial year. So, for example, to use a simple example, if you were supposed to pay $100 in the upcoming financial year, you could go to your creditors and you can explain the situation that the country is in and you can say, listen, we are asking you to defer that payment. So we'll only pay $50 as an example, and then we push back the payment further down the road. He believes the extra money will also help to deal with the digital divide the country is facing. One of the areas that we projected for um, increased spending is to ensure that we have digital, we have a broadband network. And it's for two reasons. One is to deal with the digital divide that has affected education, where you have a large number of students who cannot access online classes because they either are in areas where they don't have good internet connectivity, 
or where they have internet connectivity, they can't afford it. In recognizing that the pandemic has forced many business operators to move transactions online, he says it's likely some businesses will not return to office. In light of this, in addition to the broadband network, he says a digital literacy program is also needed to bring everyone up to speed. Cody and Barrett, TVJ News. Tragedy struck in Hyde Park community in Halifax, Alexandria, St. Anne, early this morning. Philmont Winter, an employee of the Public Defender's Office in St. James and a political organizer in the St. Anne Southwestern constituency, was burned to death at his home sometime after 2 a.m. Based on initial reports, residents in the area heard explosions and cries for help when it was noticed that Mr. Winter's house was on fire. The fire department was called. After cooling down operations, Mr. Winter's charred remains were found in a corner of the house. The People's National Party's councillor caretaker for the Alexandria Division, Christopher French, told our news centre that this was a sad moment for the people of Southwest St. Anne. In the meantime, head of the St. Anne Police, Superintendent Dwight Powell, is reporting a 22% reduction in every major crime in the parish except for murder. Superintendent Powell says murders continue to be a challenge for the police. In fact, he says the parish is doing worse than last year. We are doing just a little worse than last year, uh, which is not very... Um, let me not... Well, we just have one hope from last year in terms of murders. And I'm, I'm expecting that at the end of this month, uh, we should be making some serious inroad into um, creating a positive reduction uh, in the parish. But Superintendent Powell says he and his team have created new strategies to tackle the problem. He said they are now occupying main crime areas. Places like Steertown, uh, Parrytown, um, the Bel Air Phase 2, and those places that we are traditional hotspots for the parish of Centre. We are, we are putting in policing measures in them, and we are getting the kind of results that um, we require in terms of uh, creating that kind of positive impact on those areas. News in Manchester. Charges could be laid against the relative of 87-year-old Advara Palmer, who was found dead in Smithfield in Manchester. The senior citizen's body was found outside her house by neighbours around midday Monday. It had stab wounds to the back and neck. It's believed she may have been killed inside her house the night before or early Monday morning and her body removed elsewhere in the premises. A female relative was subsequently taken into custody. In sports, the 2021 local racing calendar will undergo yet another change. This as promoters Supreme Ventures Racing and Entertainment Limited SVRL announced a new schedule for this weekend's race meet following the government's announcement of tighter COVID-19 restrictions. Denise Walters reports. The race meet that was scheduled to take place this Saturday, March 27 at Caymanis Park has been postponed and moved to next week, Tuesday, March 30. According to SVRL in a press release on Monday, this move comes as a result of the new weekend lockdown measures. Addressing a Jamaica House press briefing on Sunday, Prime Minister Andrew Holness announced to measures that will see restrictions in business and movement as of 12 noon on Friday and Saturday and all day on Sunday. These measures are set to be in place every weekend starting Friday, March 26 until April 13. SVRL says it will make an announcement on racing scheduled for the holiday weekend Saturday, April 3 to Monday, April 5 and the weekend of April 9 and 10. Meanwhile, speaking to TVJ Sports, Chairman of SVRL Solomon Sharp points out that a plan was already in place to ensure that the company was able to withstand the impact of any drastic changes such as these curfew restrictions. Sharp says nomination for next Tuesday's race card will take place this Wednesday with scratch time on Thursday. As a result of the restrictions, he adds that on days SVRL will not be able to conduct business, 
there will be no simulcast racing. Denise Walters for TVJ Sports. Uh, to news in sports, North Sri Lanka at sports time are 99 for 1. This in their second innings reply in the post lunch session on day three of the first test against the West Indies at the Sir Vivian Richard Stadium in Antigua. Now they still trail the West Indies by three runs on first innings. Now Oshado Fernando, 34, and Lahihu Therimane, 40, are the batsmen at the crease. Kimar Roach has so far taken the lone wicket to fall. No earlier, the West Indies added only three to their first innings total to be dismissed for 271 after resuming on 268 for eight. Raheem Cornwall added one to his overnight 60, while Roach was left not out on five. Shranga Lakmal ended with five for 47, while there were two wickets each for Dashmantha Chamira and Lasith Embuladia. Now, scores in the match so far, Sri Lanka 169 and 99 for one, and the West Indies 271 all out. And that's the Midday News. I'm Giovanni Dennis. Join us at 7 for Primetime News. On behalf of the news, sports and production teams, have a good afternoon.